Hello and welcome to Stretford Paddock. This is the Paddock Podcast. I'm joined by Jay and Ronaldo. How are you doing, lads? This is like the regular thing now, isn't it? Us three. Feels like it. I'm yeah. getting that way. Ronaldo. Do you feel like you're part of the firm now, fully? I feel, I feel like it, you know. Mm. Yeah. It's good, isn't it? You said that and I literally almost got a little bit emotional. Go no, man, it. it's good. It's good to see mm. you. Well, you will get emotional in a minute. You've grown physically and as a presenter as well since we met you. Oh, I remember that, that little kid on the that... Zoom call. Do you remember him? No. Little man, I first did a oh, yeah, preview yeah. with him. Oh. He looks about 12 and now he's like a fully grown man with a beard and everything. With beard and a little, and about what, a couple kg heavier? Yeah, at least, bro. Speaking of fully grown men with beards, <laughs> Eric Ten Hag <laughs> nice. has made a few signings as Manchester United manager. Yes. And amidst the stick that he's getting, I think one of the things that, the big thing is style of play, tactics, da, da, da. Barcelona style of play. But another big thing that, he's, that we're talking about that a lot of people have a go at Eric Ten Hag for is his sort of hit and miss <clears throat> record in the transfer market and also his kind of over what would the, what would the word be overpowered kind of level in the transfer market the fact that he seems to be the only one doing things so we're going to go through every single one of his signings and rate them and work out exactly uh, what he, is yeah. going on yeah like he's over empowered yeah. in terms of he's been given like yeah, yeah. Blanche I wouldn't say given too much power yeah, I, like, I, I, was I, gonna like ask, I was gonna ask Joe what, you, what your take is on that because he, he was given a lot of power in terms of the transfer market, yeah. the talent ID, recommendations, getting the players he wanted. Um, and with Ineos coming in, yeah. um, you've heard rumours that that could be a little bit of an issue because from what we've seen from Tanagi, he seems to be a bit of a stickler. He's quite strong. We saw how he, how against the um, the Ragnik being a consultant he was when he initially arrived. He, he basically was part of the reason why they got rid mm -hmm. of Ragnik initially. If they don't afford him that same level of power that he has recently, Ten Hag might actually have a bit of a problem with that. Maybe he will. Yeah. I think he's, we've heard rumours of that, haven't we? A little few reports saying that. that like, Cause I think that's, he'll discuss that. Everyone's sort of looking at it one way, uh, as in the club just being like, it's their complete decision. They tell him what is, how it's going to be if they do keep him on. But there might be an element of where he's like, hang on a minute. I'm not saying he'd walk, but he might be like, well, there were some reports that went there, but I, that for me, that before we get into the players, I think this idea of him having no say all of a sudden is just as unlikely as him having all of the say. It's, it's, it's not no say. It's not be no say. Is it? You can't no. buy players for a manager that won't yeah. play him. Like, I know exactly. It's, it's, you, you just, you've happen. got to have some that's agreement happened. there. That does happen sometimes. I know, know it happened at United with Oli. Yeah. He didn't want Donny van der Beek. And you know how we know? He didn't fucking play him. Yeah. Jose Mourinho didn't want Fred. You know how we know? Because he said so. Yeah. Yeah. He literally said after the Juve game when we lost 1-0, I looked at my bench and I had no one on it. Mm. And Fred was sat on it. <laughs> like, <laughs> if that's not a big enough indication yeah. that he didn't such want the a, kid. Such a sort of yeah. roast by proxy. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is. So I don't even acknowledge you exist. Yeah. It's proper what's his name from... Madman, in it. Oh, imagine, uh, imagine Fred. Yeah. Fred's on the way back in, 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 in his car. He's he his manager's <laughs> interview on the radio. You uh, just signed for United. I looked to my bench and there was no one there. And anyway, like, wait, <laughs> wait a sec. I was. There. I, I was. Bet, so I bet for Fred though, it took sort of twenty minutes. But he was just having the normal sort of like Joey Tribbiani. Well, he doesn't speak yeah. English, so he probably, probably, probably didn't, they probably didn't translate it for him. That's they true. probably just ignored that bit. Um, let's get into yeah. some of these transfers. Then get your thoughts in the comments. I'll get in the chat as well. So get stuck right in. Let's start where it all began. Terrell Malassia, and we're going to rate these out of 10, and then at the Is end, we're going to do a, a top three and a bottom three, and an overall rating for okay. Ten Hag okay. as, a, as, a, as a transfer guru. So Terrell Malassia, 15.7 million pounds. He's made 39 appearances. Every single one of them was last season. There's a couple of interesting bits to this. Firstly, he was brought in as a backup, so that obviously changes how we're going to rank him. It's not going to be the same uh, as someone who was brought in to, to start games and didn't do particularly well. He's a backup to Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw had a good season, played a lot of games last year, so the fact that he got 40 appearances is, 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 is a testament to him. However, this season he hasn't played at all. He had a knee injury that he had surgery on. He then came back from that surgery bef just before Christmas. Then it was deemed that he'd either done it again or the surgery didn't work or he'd re-aggravated it. He's since had a second surgery, which Ten Hag described last week as he's, not, he's back on the pitch, but he's not really training and progress is very slow. If we're not careful, it could be a career-changing injury that we're currently seeing for Terrell Malassia. And it, there's no, basically, second season to speak of. It's overall, what are you thinking to Terrell Malassia or another? Um, as a sign-in, I think there's a few factors you've got to weigh in. Him costing 15.7 million to be a backup, you've got to kind of tamper a bit of expectations. But I do think, 
from the promise that people thought they'd get from him initially because Ten Hag did come in and then kind of vouch for him and said that he's watched him play against Ajax and he caught his eye and and this is definitely one of those signings that was probably entirely manager request. Yeah. And then he's come in and I think a lot a lot of people rated him a little bit more than I have. Do you know what I mean? I've kind of I've literally thought that he's very much what he says on the tin, backup at best. And from the most part, I thought technically he's, he's quite limited. He doesn't really offer much going forward at all. Um, defensively, he's quite committed and, uh, and rugged, but he's not like anything amazing. Um, I just thought he was pretty much at peak, a backup. And even then, I wasn't too impressed with him, even in the performances that I did see. He had one performance here or there, and then people kind of overblowed those. What are you but, saying then out of 10? And as a sign and not as a player, but when you factor in the, the mm. fee, the injuries, and him being injured, him being a backup player, and his talent and quality I, as well, I'd probably say a four, four out of ten, a four out of ten, a four out of ten, because and particularly people do kind of hit back when you do criticise Malasia, saying that he's got room to grow and all his potential. People act like he's a nineteen-year-old and a twenty-year-old, and he's not. He's 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 twenty-four, twenty-five. I'm not sure he's how old he is. when we signed him. So Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he's. I don't think there's much more from last year to go. And if we are trying to get back to a decent level, I don't think Tyler Malassi is someone that you want to be playing a number of games for United during the season. What do you think, Jay? Yeah, I agree with what Ronnie's saying, really. I like the kid, and I thought when he came into those games after the Brentford loss, the Liverpool game in particular, he, he kind of, his energy was what got him through. Like, yeah. he, he, you could see ability-wise, he was slightly limited. And he got exposed badly against Arsenal a few games later when I think it was Saka had him on toes. But yeah. he, he'd get back. If he got beat, he'd get back. He'd, he just he had an energy to him and he gave the crowd a big boost as well. He's a really likeable character. The quality's not quite there and just the injuries. It's not his fault, obviously, but you've missed half your potential United career since you arrived with injury. And also, the bits that you have been there for, often or not, you've not been first choice. So... I can't give him a sort of positive rating. I think no. it's slightly negative. So I'm, I'd be with Ronnie. I'd probably be in a not awful because he has put some good games, some good performances. Sorry, and been part of some important results, especially that post. Excuse me, Brentford sort of you know rejuvenation that we had to have. It's like you know we've got to show something, here and he was part of that, but not a not a great. Yeah, I think I, I think I saw I saw probably a little bit more at Regulon in a short. Um, time span in, really qual- in terms of it. quality in terms of quality yeah. 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 4 out of 10 yeah I think yeah. he's right I agree yeah. I don't uh, want to argue for the sake of it next up then Christian Eriksen on a free uh, 64 appearances over the last two seasons which is impressive really to say what was his wages for um, I don't know exactly I'll find yeah, out I think, I think 200k a week I think because that's what you got to factor in sometimes with free transfers free free always looks better, better better on the surface but sometimes to kind of compromise a free transfer you've got to pay a little looking bit more looking around 170 a week according oh, sorry, to three or four different sources between 150 and 170 it's it are not reported horrendous but especially by United standards that's probably he's probably one of the you know the other players probably call him a tramp because yeah, he's only yeah. on yeah. 70k a week for me this is a very good signing oh 100% on free he was very good last year I thought he was I crucial didn't realise how he was until we got him yeah me neither like, remember like was it one of the European games it might have not sausage that it was one of the other like Sheriff or Summer, we brought him on because yeah. we couldn't beat them without him. He was, he was what he was, wasn't he like basically top two player at Tottenham for a while? He was, he was very yeah. well thought of, do you know what I mean? But, um, and then he went to Brentford after he had his heart issue and he was almost like revolutionary for them. They, they, they loved him very well, thought it was quality, us, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, I think he's come and in terms of technical ability, he gave us a little bit that we, we missed in there. He just doesn't have the athleticism and the legs anymore and I think it's deteriorated even more so over the past season or so even though he was never much of a runner anyway actually Ericsson was someone that used to cover a lot of distance in games but he's just not very like dynamic and quick mm. uh, he's an and engine, that, yeah. but he's not yeah. uh, speedy yeah, and, and also yeah. he's I think that's gone, you know that yeah, debut that. against Atletico in Norway it was over there and like he was on corners and stuff and I was in the corner and just the way he sort of fades in the ball and the mm. way he hits the ball mm. just there's a class there there's a quality there that you're like mm. that's you know it like other players haven't got that. Even someone like Bruno who can pick a pass isn't quite got that, yeah. what Ericsson had. And for a little while, up until maybe the Andy Carroll injury, injury. yeah, like he was flying. Yeah. And then since then, he's been patchy. And also, there's times where we've not used him in the right way. Like, you need someone mm. who's got a bit more of an engine, a bit more can get stuck in in certain games in midfield. He's not that guy. But yeah, I think a positive signing. Yeah, I think 
The only downside, and someone makes a good point here, Daniel Berry says, Ericsson 5 out of 10, which I, I think it's higher than that, but he says three-year deal for one decent season. It is a three-year deal. We're in that's that a, that's a fair comment, I, know. I think to me that knocks it from an eight down to a seven. I wasn't going to give an eight, though. I was going to be probably around the six and a half, kind of seven mark. Okay. Um, just because even though he's come on the three, it's, it's not like a... a it is in a sense in terms of what the adversity that he faced with his, but he was a player that come in with a lot of pedigree still. Yeah. And a lot of bits. So the expectations were still there that he'd be a definitely decent asset in a better team than Brentford is what you thought would, would materialise. And he has shown us quality, he's shown us um, greatness in a few games, but for the most part, it's not like being a perfect story, especially his struggle with injuries the past season or so and, and his legs are just completely gone. Yeah. What are you saying then? I think seven. I think seven as I well. I think seven, just about, I think he's I been a seven. positive signing. Not amazing, but good. And there was a spell where he was very good. Yeah. Right, mm. Next up then, Lissandro Martinez. This one to me, I would say in terms of quality, in terms of influence on the game, influence on the team. I know he's, he's been injured for a lot of this season, but when he has played, we've seen a, a, a genuinely sort of squad and performance and everything changing player here yeah. he, he for me has been the best signing that we've made and it's such a shame that he's had two injuries that both of them sort of seem like freak injuries I won't even put him down as an injury prone player and his track record has shown that and then it was this weird just pushing off and his metatarsals broke and then someone falling on his knee and him sort of shield him which is a shame and it knocks him down a little bit from maybe a nine or a ten but he's I think he's probably been our best signing in the last two years he, uh, go on, Ronaldo. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think he's definitely, without doubt, been our. Uh, in terms of consistency, in terms of the character he's shown, because yeah. I think a lot of th when we had good periods under Ten Hag, he was probably the catalyst for a lot of that in terms of just the kind of energy and a little bit of needle and just the, the, what he brought to the back yeah. line. I felt like they all fed off him. You see, whenever they defended something well in the box, you've got the low and Varane coming up to him saying, "Yeah," and he, he brought a bit of. Do you know, Don't like at the end, at the end there was well. a long game under, I can't remember yeah. the game last season where we won. And he's walking around just pushing people at the end. He's like, he just walks up to yeah. Marcus and just pushes him. And he's walking up, he's just grabbing someone. I love that. I and love he gets it. the crowd going as well. Everyone talk, like, yeah. He's right, everyone talks about his quality. His yeah. quality is without doubt, he's probably, you can argue he's the best ball playing centre half in world football, or definitely up there as one of them. And that's just in terms of his press resistance, his ability to pick out passes. Yeah. He's so technically secure and clean and he completely transforms where you play in terms of a build-up from the back. But it's also the other side of it in terms of just him as a personality and a, and a, and a character. And yeah. he, he's, he's almost built like a prototypical United player in terms of Do you know? Do you know what the sad thing about Martinez is? It's not his fault. We're almost too reliant on him. Yeah, it's like without him, we're almost screwed. We're finished. Like we can't yeah. do anything with, him. with him. Yeah. It works. Without him, it doesn't. And that's not his fault. No, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it is ridiculous. <laughs> like, we need three players yeah. as good as him and like yeah. him. All of his centre back. If you're going to play how we play, obviously you might want to start the bigger one. You know, someone who's a bit quicker who can. Carry, but you need three players who are as good or nearly as good as your centre backs. Like City have got. They've got. Stones does other things, but they've got Stones, they've got Diaz, they've got uh, a Kanji, Akanji. they've got Ake. Like you can sort of switch these in and out. United, once they've got rid of Martinez, the, there's a big drop to Varane, and then from there it's sort of like because even there was through the, there different were, styles of play. There was the, was it? I think it was a derby when it where Luke Shaw was left centre back. Yeah. Beat him. And that kind of work, well, then you've got to, that you can't do that because Luke Shaw's injured and plus you haven't got any other left back. So yeah. that's gone out the window. Mm. And even that's not as good as mine is. So it just do not work without him. Yeah, I right. think he's our most important player under Eric tonight. I'm not yeah. saying he's our best, but I certainly think he's our most important. I, I do. For me, as a signing, I'm going to say eight and a half. I'd go eight. I think I'd... the injury, because he's basically had, out of the two seasons he's been here, he's almost had one off. Not his fault, but I don't think he was fit at the beginning of the season. He was, certainly wasn't at the levels we've seen before. And then he comes back in, shows us what he's about, and gets injured again. Yeah, I'd say eight, so eight, I, eight I, and a half, nine, at the very least. Okay. Because if you factor in the, the the rankings that you'd probably give to a lot of the signings that have come to like the recent years, for one to be actually a positive yeah. and a good story, I think it deserves a, a, a great ranking. So, I'd so what are we going? I'm going eight. You guys are going eight and a half. Eight and a half. So you're giving me eight and a half. So eight and a half it is. Um, on the pitch, he may have been our best signing, but off the pitch, there's been some pretty exciting things going on as well, Jay. Pretty exciting. Just I a think bit, it's just like world shattering. Yeah. This is unbelievable. We have waited for this, like United have waited for a title, right? Me and you have sat around chatting about when are we going to get the 5.0? 
When a manscape gonna go from the 4.0, which we love, yes. to the 5.0, dare we dream? Well, the Ultra 5.0 is here. The performance fa package 5.0 is finally here. And using the code Devils20, yeah. you can not only can you get the Ultra 5.0, the performance package, you can also get 20% off and free shipping. Now, you know me, Joe. I'm an old man. I'm setting my ways, yeah? Mm -hmm. I don't like change. I don't like new things. I don't like anything that's different. Now, whilst I'm happy about the 5.0 development, I'm yeah. a bit worried. It's like, well, what about the things that I love? What about the things that I'm used to? What Jay, about my creature comfort? Let me stop you there. Go you on. still get everything you used to get, but now you get more as well. So you get, <laughs> you still get, you know, the, the anti-chafing box of briefs. You still get the crop preserver, the crop toner, the ball deodorant. You still get all that stuff. You still get the shared travel bag as an extra. You will get all that stuff, but now you also get the Weed Whacker 2.0, which is the improved ear and nose hair trimmer, and of course, the jewel in the crown. <laughs> the Lomo 5.0 Ultra. Looking after my yeah. jewels and in it's my got, crown. It's now, it used to have one blade, now it's got two. It's still got so that, that trimming blade that you know and love, but now there's the foil blade for extra closeness, for that closer, Close, 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 close. Has shape. it got the multifunctional on off switch? Yeah, so you can turn it off and you can lock it. So it's not just going to go off when you put it in your luggage. It's not going to run all the battery out in the cupboard when someone elbows it or drops a toilet roll on it. It won't turn on when it's locked. So you don't have that embarrassing thing when it's buzzing in your suitcase. Yeah. And the guy, the thing asks, is it a vibrator? Exactly. And you're not you going to I'm not sure. That. It's either my manscapes or my vibrator. I need to check. Yeah, or my mum's vibrator yeah. that I keep in the bag as well for Because <laughs> it's the only thing that's scent proof. Right, if you want to get 20% off and free shipping, you can go to manscaped.com. The link is in the description. The link is also in the chat. So click on it. Use the code DEVILS20 at checkout for 20% off and free shipping. Can so we just wait, make wait, Dana in the comments, yeah. does it got a light? Yeah, it, it does, does got it, a light. It's got the LED light, but it can does. I just make it clear that my mum's vibrator does not come with it? Does it not? No. Right, Came with well. mine. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But thank you very much to Manscaped. We'll see you in a bit. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> just wrap the show. Um, next up, Casemiro was next on the docket. This See, is I'm going to lose the crowd. This is where I lose the room. 72 appearances, 52 million quid, five-year contract. Big numbers for a, a player who... Is that, is that the fee, 52? I think so. Was no, it rising up to 60? That, it was it? more than that, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it was right, nah, it'd be it was 60 70. million. I thought no, it, was it wasn't 70. What was it? Then? It was 60 million. All right. right. With, a, with, a, with a potential... For a further 10. For right. 10 so oh, up okay. to 70 then. Yeah. Up to yeah. 70. Well, 60 then is the, let's call it 60. Yeah, I don't know where we got these numbers could off be, needs. If he, get, if, he get, if he hits 50 games, we get another 10 million, or if he wins a trophy mm. or some stupidness. Yeah. So it's up to 70 million quid, Jay, you were right. How many, how, many, how many years? This is the kicker. Four plus one. And what you, what's he on each, uh, what's his contract? It's circa 250 to 300 grand so, a week. Mate, this deal, yeah, is crazy. And I like Casemiro, man, but for me, he's disappointed. I'm yeah. sorry, he has. And the amount of discussion we have about Casemiro and his performances shows you that he hasn't been great. Because we're not having a discussion every week going, how great was Casemiro? We did that a little bit when he, got, when he came here. Yeah, we did. But every week, almost, it's like, Casemiro, oh, what's going on with him? Oh, he's not quite the player he was. Oh, the, uh, all this other stuff. He's had injuries. It takes him a while when he comes back from injuries. He's had several games where he's been underwhelming. He's had a few games where he's been shocking. Yeah. And he's had some games where he's been amazing. His season's yeah. very high. His consistency's non-existent. And for me, I don't think he's been a great signing. If I, don't if, if I the way to, to rank Casemiro, you, you, you got to almost average out with the two seasons. So last season, he was really good. Until the last stage of the season, he started to gradually fall off a little bit. But I think for the first six, seven, eight, eight months. Um, at United, I, I thought he was really good and he was, he was quite transformative in a way, actually. Mm. And he wasn't just an asset in terms of him being a defensive anchor and a defensive midfielder, which everyone knew Casemiro for and we brought him in for, but he was also chipping in with a lot of important goals and he was scoring goals and he was probably our biggest threat from set pieces. He probably is our best header of the ball on the team, probably a lot, him, him, Varane, Maguire maybe. And I thought he almost overachieved in that sense in terms of going forward. But I think the fall off from last season to this season has been so big like, that if like last season was probably like you'd say an eight, eight and a half, and then this season you're probably saying it's like a, a two or a three. Mm. If you add it, if you add them together and average it out, he probably over the entirety of the of his tenure at United, you're probably going to look at it as a bit, probably being a five and a half, six I, out I, of ten. I agree with everything you're saying, but I'd also add in that runner. Yeah. I actually think there was little spells last season where he was it took him a while to get going. 
Like, if you remember well, those first few the games, end, uh, the oh. first few games, do you remember when Somebody was in the team for the Arsenal game and was going, what's he doing oh, here? Yeah, Tonight's right. gone yeah. mental. But Casemiro took him a while to adjust, which I get. Then there was another spell before the Bournemouth game, sort of, where he had, he had a little bit of ropey one, then the Bournemouth game, he was great again, away at Bournemouth. So he had a little bit of spells, like five or six games, plus the silly suspensions. Two, a bit harsh, I'm being a bit harsh there, because they were harsh on him. But the, the Palace one I thought was unnecessary. Yeah. Like, he should have done better there. Um, and then this season, I'm with Ronnie, I just don't think we've seen... The, 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 yes, you know, Forrest, he got player of the match, and we've seen a few, you know, he scored a few goals. But like, somebody's been more effective than Casemiro mm. this season. I'm not even his biggest fan. I think... In terms of performances that I can really nail on him, there have been a handful of really poor ones this season. I think there's another sort of 10 in there maybe where you could have swapped him for De Bruyne or whoever and it wouldn't have looked a lot better because of, as we always talk about, these gaps in midfield, the fact that people around him aren't performing, the fact that the people behind him... I thought United's most important people last season was Casemiro, Varane and Martinez. That triangle, sort of playing out from the back, defending together, when they played, I think there was a point where when those three had played up until about March, we hadn't lost a game. Like, it was a very, very crucial sort of little, I, little, I, little I triangle I get, there. I get your point as, but, a, as a free, but I'd throw, I'd throw Marcus in there last season. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah of course, he, he was the one who was winning yeah. us the games. But you look at the number of goals we scored, it was not very good. Yeah. And obviously, I'm not blaming Marcus for that, I'm blaming people around him. But I think the thing that kept us in the, the tournaments that we're in was the fact that we didn't concede a lot with those three playing. But that doesn't mean that he just gets a pass because everyone else is shit, so you, you can be shit if you want. I think overall, this averages out at probably like a five and a half. Because even last season, mm. well, like Anfield, everyone said, oh, he's injured. Yeah. Was he? Or was he just having a stinker? Yeah. There was no evidence he was injured. It was just, he was that bad, everyone thought he must be injured. He must be bad. And we keep saying injured. that. Oh, he's injured. Oh, oh. His, his, his fitness ain't great. We might just not be playing very also, well. Why is his fitness not great? Yeah. He's been mm. here 18 months. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> like, what, what, right, and why is your fitness not very yeah. good? For me, I think we make a lot of excuses for him at times mm. when you saw, you mentioned it the other day, he was watching Ajax versus Real Madrid where he was sprinting for the ball, he was doing all sorts. We don't yeah. see enough of that Casemiro. No. And we know how good he is. In terms of Bill here, and you want to talk about ceilings, he's as high as anyone in that team. Probably higher than most of them, nearly all of them. But in terms of consistency, he's near the bottom. Do you know what it is with United and the transfer strategy? And the likes of Casemiro and Varane, more so than Martin as an example, is obviously United have had this kind of shiny, shiniest toy syndrome with the transfer market, regardless of age. Yeah. And um, United's problem is when we go into transfer windows, I don't know if it's out of desperation, it's, can, it's, it's almost like ceiling buys mm. rather than floor buys. So they're, they're buying the shiniest, most fanciest player possible to try and feel like they can almost like raise the ceiling of the team, almost for that kind of like, like that quick spurt of improvement, rather than like cleverer floor buys or players that aren't as maybe. What aren't do you mean by a floor buy? Like so just 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 signing cleverer signings of probably youngerish players that are on the way up in their career who and, raise the yeah, floor of the team. Who raise the, the floor the of the team? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because. We go into transfer uh, markets and then we buy like a player for 80, 90 mil, hoping that they kind of- Is that rate a common term? Sorry to interrupt you running floor buys. I don't know. You, nah, I no, think I'm just saying just, it. Just using it now, but- Yeah, using it now. Just like just a, so people know it. Just like raising the level, just to raise- I get the, what you mean. Raise the level of the team. Yeah, the trans transfer experience. It's like raising the level of the team, but then you've got like, but then you've still got, because of the money that you spent on that, you've got players there in the team that are so far below the level of who you've just signed anyway. He doesn't end up benefiting the team yeah, in the long I, run. I hate, do you know what I mean? Do you know what? Some so, of it with Casemiro might be as well. He was genuinely one of the most exciting signings I think we've made for me. Yeah. I was like, we've got him? Yeah. What? We didn't get Rabiot and we've gone and got Casemiro? That's insane. This is amazing. And yet, we haven't really seen that Casemiro. And yeah. I get everything yeah. you're saying. It's different when you're alongside some of the players there than when you're alongside Tony Cruz and Luka Modric and you're you know, winning Champions Leagues and Vinicius Juniors picking up the ball and running at everyone and scoring those goals, whatever. I get all that. I just think mm. in terms of, if we're being objective about performance after performance after performance and just looking at them all, I'm with my man here where I go, there's a lot of eights and stuff, but there's some twos and threes yeah. in there. Yeah. yeah. What we're saying, the five and a half overall? Five Six? and a half. Five? What I'd say five, make it. Five. I think just slightly above that for me, I'd go five and a half, I think. What do you think? 
Um, Maybe six. I'd probably go five and a half. Yeah. I'd probably go five and a half. But what, what we finalised, because we finalised what I was saying, was... Sorry, I didn't talk to you. Yeah, it was, just, it was more just... I think United will benefit more in the long run of, of signing three players that are like sixes and sevens out of ten rather than just buying one that he thinks a nine out of ten and he might flop <laughs> on. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah. I think United need to start being like that when they strategize the transfer window. Yeah. Because then you you'll improve more incrementally over a longer period of time. But then you may be able to then do that kind of galactical signing a season on. We see a little bit of that from City, you know. Mm. I would yeah. argue that maybe like Aki and Akanji and players like that ain't necessarily your nine out of tens. They're like good, solid players. Yeah, I know they're coming into a team that's full of good players anyway, so and it's different. Then. But but we seem to like get your point. Like if we get a Paul Pogba and we stick him in a team that's not that great, mm. everyone else will be mint. And it's so that's late. what we. Every, it's like every every sign in United make. It, there's an expectancy for that person to be yeah. Brian a, life, a life changer, a life yeah. saver. Yeah, we're trying to mean? buy the final mean, piece of the puzzle. I mean? like, he's going to drag the team yeah. up and everything's exactly going to be... Yeah, like, trying to buy the final piece of the puzzle and you've not got any of the other pieces in place. Yeah, the rest of the, I mean? the, rest so of the like, puzzle is just on fire in a pile behind yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's move on then uh, to Vout Vegost. Loan signing, 31 appearances, two goals, no goals in the Premier League, um, which was obviously... A, a very odd one because he scored the winner in the Carabao Cup. Or sorry, he got the assist for the winner in the Carabao Cup final, or the, for the first goal in the Carabao Cup final, which could argue was the winner because it was 2-0. Um, but was sort of notorious for his lack of ability to score goals. I just, yeah, like, was, I, I've sort of made a rough mill back here with the, the rating that I give Casemiro because I look insane if I give Vegos the higher one. But I think in terms of what he did for the team. I think he did a good job for the team in a lot of games. Okay. He just didn't score in the Premier League, which obviously is a big black mark for any striker, let alone a striker playing for Manchester United. Also, his goal score record in the Cups wasn't great. I think he got two goals in Cup competitions. But he was part of a team that didn't just win that trophy. That actually had a good record. Mm -hmm. He played a lot of games where we won a lot of games. Yeah. A lot of those games at Old Trafford that we won, he was part of that. So he wasn't a complete disaster. He just wasn't anywhere near the level we needed. And I think the manager kind of knew that. He was like, I've got to buy a striker. I need someone I've got to have to pay any money for. He was on loan at Besiktas from Burnley, for fuck's sake. There's a reason behind that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, we weren't getting in early in Ireland, were we? So, for me, he's a five out of ten. I think he's um, he was a bit soccer aid isn't he? Out there, goes. He yeah. felt a bit... Do you know, he do felt you know, a bit do you know I almost sold a game against him? And I shouldn't. But that celebration game is real best. Yeah. The one that he scored the, the, his first goal at Old Trafford. And the fourth it was, it was in like a 4-1 win. The fourth in a 4-1 win. And, and, and he was and crying. I, yeah. Like, I get it. If I scored at United, I'd do the same, but I'm not a professional footballer. He knee slided 25. Yeah, he did. It, the, the other players were stood in the centre circle and he was still going. And that actually made me think, all right, son, come on. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't fucking make a wish. Though. That's what I mean. I, for me, it's a three out of ten. Oh, really? It's, because if you think five is average, I'm not absolutely panning him here, <sighs> but it's... It's a below average sign. I can't. I, I can't. Can give, what can I give Casemiro a five? A five. All right. I've got. Yeah. I've got. Get, yeah, I've, got, I've, got, I've, got, I've, got uh, I've got. I can't give him the same as Casemiro. I'm sorry. You're right. I'll go, I'd go four and a half. Then. What are you saying? I'd probably say one and a half. One and a half. Yeah. I, I, I didn't disaster. realize I'd give Casemiro a five. I'm, so well, sorry. So I, I've got to give him less three. Than, then I've got to give him less than Casemiro. You buy a striker to score goals, and he came in and scored two goals in 31 games. I mean, do you give him any credit for what Marcus was doing while alongside him? Do you give him any credit for that? I give him a little bit, but Marcus. But if, if Marcus wasn't doing that, it's his striker that's got 31 appearances and fuck all. So the fact that Marcus did that is yeah. the only reason he's got three and it's not a one yeah. for me. Yeah. It's weird with Vegos because part of me wants to defend him, but then I think like back to the, the, the last game of the season where he, he still missed that sitter. The FA Cup final, like we're bringing him on there, bringing on Foden and whatever it was. Yeah. I mean, yeah, all right, I'll, get, I'll go four. I'll go four. Okay, so yeah. what we're saying then overall, three if you're one, I'm a three, you're one and a half, you're a four. Two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. There we go. Right, Anthony. Wow. This was the next signing chronologically. I almost don't want to dwell on this too much because it's not going to be good things being said, is it? Can, and he's still a United player. Can I make the case with the defence? Okay, I'd love to. Yeah. What right. well, you, Anthony? Yeah. Defence. I know. Right. Go on. Three in his first three games. Yeah. Scored. Hit the ground running. Scored some goals. Goal against Arsenal as well in that. Like, I love the fact he did three. I don't mind him the celebrations he did for that goal because it won up all the Arsenal fans. We did like three celebrations. One goal against Barcelona, I think as well. Yep. Like we have seen some moments from him where you go, "There's a player there. There's got ability there." There's, there's been moments. However, that all being said, 
He went five and a half months last season in the Premier League without a goal and assist. I don't think he's got a goal and assist in the Premier League this season. I think his only goals and assists have been against Newport County this season, mm. unless I'm missing one. That's not good enough. He isn't good enough. There has been little bits what we've seen, but overall, a pretty bad signing. Yeah. In fact, it's a pretty disastrous one, and we're massively overpaid. 85 million as well. That was me that sticking up worth, for the kid. Yeah. That's the best I can do. What are you, what are you thinking? It, it, for me, he's one out of 10. He's been a disaster. Obviously, he, he, he's not even just come and like massively underwhelmed, but he's also like obviously had his issues off the pitch, and then it's just like. Do you know what? If you wrote like the story, it's gone much worse. Um, than put it in, really. it, on the whole, we got. I, I think it just as a, as a signing, those are the type of signings that, like that spending eighty five million on Anthony that can set a team back <laughs> two transfer windows. It can set you, can literally set you back a season or two, because we're talking about impact and position. And I, I was making the case about the type of buyers that you do. Wingers and forwards are probably one of the are one of the positions as well as a centre-half or maybe a defensive midfielder nowadays, that can completely transform a team mm. and can make all the difference. And you can probably get about 250, 300 wingers in world football that are better than Anthony for much less than we paid for him. You know what made me laugh? I did a and that's a big I did a appearance with, uh, yeah. on, on the radio the other day with Rory Jennings and he said, he mentioned McCullough and he said, he said, Adam McCullough said he's not the worst signing United have ever made. Is the worst signing in Premier League of ever in Premier League. It's, it's a value. It's for, It's just for. It's at least for. It's a right. money value. He's, he's, Anthony's I nothing. He's stick up. He went the other way. He went like it's not just the worst signing United yeah. ever made. It's the worst signing anyone's ever made in the Premier League. He's nothing that really epitomises a modern day Premier League winger. He's not. He's not quick enough. He doesn't. He can't beat a man. He's not dynamic. He's. He's. He's decision making and his end product isn't great either for someone that's meant to be a technical kind of swazzy player do you know what I mean I don't I've I massively I think he was massively overrated by Ten Hag I think because I think Ten Hag's a reason why we've spent that much on him I don't I do, think, do you know what, what I mean? so, for me though Joe remember when we were doing the thing on him was it 8 goals and 4 assists in 48 games whatever it was mm. the numbers weren't his numbers weren't great in every either yeah. which kind of surprised me that it's ridiculous for that you'd go that. out and be willing to spend 85 million it's quid the fee, on that it's the, it's the yeah, absolute that's the thing I get you think yeah. this guy brings something to the team and I want him there yeah. but for those numbers I know numbers aren't everything but they're an important part of, a, of an attacking players you know you, you know why he's the worst MO. you know why Anthony probably can be perceived as one of the worst transfers in Premier League history go on he absolutely destroyed the winger market in, in world football in terms of transfers. Could you see that as a positive? Probably for other, not, not in a way, but all the prices that you will see quoted for wingers now in these transfer windows will be because of Anthony. It is a bit harsh. No, it, 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 it 100% well, is. Pepe was 75 no, million two years no, no, before. It, did equally fuck off for Arsenal. It 100% is. The what, reason, what, the, Pepe being a similar price the reason why, years right, before. Let me, let me explain. The, the Mudrick, the, Mudrick to Chelsea was the price it was because after we spent 85 million Anthony, every single director of football at a club, any time someone came in for their winger was like, you're gonna have to spend 90 million, 85 million, no, because, no. because about, my wing, because my, if you've spent, if, if Anthony's gone for 85 million, yeah. then my, my, I think my wing is better than him. On, on, the Mud I mean? on the Mudrick one though, yeah. I think the reason he was so expensive was bizarrely, um, there was a, like a little mini bidding war between him and Arsenal. Now the, Arsenal no, the CEO of, of Shakhtar the next literally said to Chelsea, United have spent 85 million on Anthony. I think Mudrick's better than him, so you're gonna have to pay more than that. But that's, that's but, but that's, that's a, I get that, and I'm not saying he hasn't influenced it. He has I influenced think, the market 100. percent Yeah, I know. I'm not saying yeah, he yeah, hasn't. Yeah. But I think Pepe being 79 million euros in 2019 and doing about the same as 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 you know, as, you know as, what it is, right? I'm not gonna Anthony. Lie. I, I, he's one of the reasons that Anthony cost what he did. You know what's funny? Pepe was bad for Arsenal, and I reckon he actually still. Did better than than yeah, Anthony. Well you know, this is one I mean? thing I don't like about Andy. What you've just said there. You argue with anyone. You argue with Arsenal fans, and they'll say Pepe was better. You argue with Chelsea fans, they'll say Mudrick's actually got more about him than Anthony. It's like well, people like, pick their yeah. worst and put him up against Anthony against and Scott. say, look, your worst is better. Uh, our worst, sorry, is better He's than your worst. Well, and I hate that. Let's rate I hate it, as it as a transfer then, because you know, I'm gonna. Put, uh, do you know what? I'm gonna go and say. Two and a half out of ten. I think there's an argument that he helps us get top three and get over the line in the, the Carabao. Yeah. And that's worth something. Yeah. That's I, not completely useless. Yeah. 0 0.5. Right. 
I, th I think I, I agree with you, Jay. I think I think two, two and a half. There's, so, there's some. This he deserves a couple of points for beating Barcelona. He played, how many games did he play? against Arsenal? Seventy-three games, he, right? Yeah, for, for like you said, if, if he played most games in a team that did pretty well yeah. last season, he's not just pure shit. No. He's just not good enough and not worth the. I think the thing. I think this season he's been terrible, yeah. and I think last season. He was poor for parts of it, but he was good in some games. Yeah. Right, so can, can I can you get you to answer this about Andy? Go on. How many Premier League teams do you reckon he starts for? None. Nah. That and he starts for Sheffield. I, I, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm saying Premier League oh, teams because yeah, if, no, if, if I said top ten teams, he doesn't yeah. start for any team in the top ten. Let's have a look. Let me just look at the actual. Value. I don't know, you know, because does Alanga start from Forest? Yeah. Does Alanga starts for Forest. Does um, yeah, yeah regularly but, not oh, every week, but yeah. Right. Does. Okay. I think he. I think he would. I don't know. Like, does he I think start? He, he gets a game. He starts. He plays for Forest. Come on. He plays for anyone in the bottom three: Burnley, Luton, Sheffield United. He gets a game for that. That's that, the only reason I asked Steven Langer started. For, I think he for, starts for, for Forest. Forest. I didn't Based on what I saw from Everton the other day, he plays for them. I don't. I. I, mean, I not, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you, are you, style, but he's, are you he's sure? And he's better than Jack Harrison. I don't know. I actually don't know if he's better than Jack Harrison. I think he. I think he would get a game. I for think now he's awful. I think. There was a time when he wasn't this bad for United. That's yeah. the only reason I'm giving him two. And I think last season was a good season and he played a part. Yeah, so so that. let's say two and let's I'm move saying on. Two. Uh, you know, two he's shit, he's still, Let's not pretend player. that two out of ten for an 85 million pound winger is a good yeah. mark. That is and awful. And he's still a United player, so I don't yeah. want it to be a thing where we but stand there for 20 minutes and just absolutely slag him off. Okay. Um, Marcel Sabitzer on loan. 18 you know appearances, three goals, two assists. There was assists. something there, you know, with him. He was decent. It's weird though. He, he weren't amazing, but I like. I for some I like him. No, that game he came. Palace won it yeah, when he yeah. came on, and he looked and he got that awful free kick. It was never free kick given against him. I thought there's a player there. He's a bit yeah. of a goal threat, weren't he? Yeah, and he got them two against Sevilla. Was it? We, not Sevilla. He came in. Was it Sevilla? Yeah, was it? Yeah, what they were getting knocked out of last season? The, the Europa. Uh, Europa. Severe. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. I'm losing my marbles. He scored, didn't he? Them, like, yeah. I think uh, he came in as a bit of a, oh, he's going to be a centre midfielder and he's going to transform, which is every single signing that United ever make is meant to be transformative. Um, and I thought, from what I've seen, he, he seems to just be like a bit of a second striker, in it? That's where, yeah. where he's crashing a box, etc. And actually, since he's gone to Dortmund after leaving United, he's done really well there. Mm. Injury fucks him really. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. Daniel Berry says four out of ten injured twice when we need him. That, that's injury a good point. It's the yeah. timing of his, his injuries. Did it. It, 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 no doubt in my mind, he's a good player. Yeah, I didn't look at him and go, he's trash. No. He's a good player. He's got injuries on a low move when you don't want, and you never want injuries. But especially when all of a sudden you're getting in the team, it looks like we're going to rely on you, and you get injured. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we've got a couple of super chats before we get into the rank here. Uh, Jan Ingerhoff says Ronaldo. I think he's talking about uh, Ragnik. Sorry, all right. I don't Go know on, if he's talking about this. the signing of Cristiano Ronaldo or if he's addressing this to you, but he's probably addressing this to you. Ronaldo, Ragnick was sacked in March long before ERH was appointed. I think he meant ETH because of what he said in a presser. Um, so he thinks that it, it, it was wasn't that handover period between Ten Hag and Ragnick that got him sacked, like you said. He literally came out at the time saying that Ten Hag didn't want um, well, Ragnick, call, didn't Ragnick didn't above him handover, as a consultation role. Which was role. just insane gaffer, but it was meant to be staying there. As a, as a, but apparently when they were... Shopping it to Tanag. Tanag was very adamant about not wanting to work with Ragnik or Ragnik being a consultant. There you go. That made sense to me yeah. what he said because I think even if he yeah. if he did, you'd at least have a meeting with him because mm. he he had left. He was still part of the club. He's saying sat. He, he, he was an call. interim manager. So it was, Bro, more, it was more like. But he was meant to have that consultancy yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. Me and you do a bigger handover when you're going on holiday or I'm going on holiday. That's true. And um, Bill O'Reilly's been a member for 27 months. Says with signings, it's not always set in stone. Look at Shaw. Every six months, you give a different answer. That's true, in it because if you rank Luke Shaw now it'd be two or three points lower than it would have been at the end of last me, season me Dave it's a good point that Steve, I think it was did a, a video about five years ago about Luke Shaw where we said the jury was out on him yeah. and someone brought it up about two years ago saying how wrong we were and I think about a year after that people were going actually you might have a point yeah. like it's just one of them so okay. for me ranking to bits overall I think it's just I'll give him a four I think yeah four and a half I think just slightly below average average would have been the same as what we saw, but he didn't get injured. Do you know what the mad thing is about Sabitz? He kind of looked like a United player. Yeah. He kind of looked like someone who belonged at the club. He just got injured at the wrong time. Yeah, what are you saying? Four. Four. Let's say four overall. Um, next up then, into last summer's transfers. Mason Mount, 55 million. Got it done early. Chelsea needed Rid. It made sense. We need more ball playing midfielders. We need people who can create chances. Don't leave it all to Bruno. Cast uh, Ericsson's legs are going a little bit. 
there was reasons why I thought this could work. He's got a good engine, something that Ericsson doesn't have. He's known for his sort of work rate and his output and his productivity. What, 12 appearances? He's been injured for 145 days. You know what's crazy? He's been injured for so long. And you, you know what I say about availability? Famously. Yeah. And the 12 games that he's actually played, I can't remember one notable performance out of any of them. Or him actually looking that good. No. I think it, it, I would say he's. I don't think no, he's been terrible. I would oh, say United fans. Been, were, United fans were kind of watching. I think he's been quite average when he's played. Yeah, yes. And I was. I, right, I got talked into this. I was against his sign. I think I did a video with Steve. Video with Steve and Steve yeah. talked me into it with all his stats and his scout. Which is reports. crazy though, because he, he weren't. He, he yeah. Weren't really into and he got it. me <laughs> convinced. And then and my default setting is when someone signs for us, I back him. So once he signed that yeah. piece of paper, I was like right behind the kid. Yeah. But when we were linked with him, I was like, I don't want him. We got him. And I thought, right, I'll buy into it. He looked terrible in preseason. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's let's be honest. Yeah. Let's not pretend. He looked terrible in preseason. You think, okay, he's just settling in. Then he gets injured for the entire season, yeah. basically. I don't know what's going on there. So it's just been a disastrous signing so yeah, far. Yeah. Now, and this next is season, one that can firmly change. For me, if you go back through the list, obviously the loans aren't going to change. Uh, you know, Ericsson is only going to get one way because of his age. You know, I think Martinez could even go up. Uh, Vegas ain't going to change. Anthony, I don't think he's going to change, but could. Anthony could change because he's still here. Up, but certainly Mount, the score I'm giving right now is based on what he's done so far. He's still got four years left on his contract. He could still be an 8-9. He could be a 10 out of 10 transfer but in so three far. years' time. But so far, it's a 2. Because we could have gone what, for three. What, what, you know what I mean? How much worse could it have gone so far? I'm not ruling him out. What's he done to get a 2? Be a decent fee. 50 million, it's not, a, it's million. not a decent fee. I don't think, I think it's an okay fee. It's not fee. a decent fee. He had one year left on his contract. It's a massive overpay, to be honest. He I had, think he had, so far, I think by comparison to some of the others on this list, nah, but they, is more they, they didn't, they didn't have one year left on their contract. You, paying 55, nearly 60 million for someone that you knew the club wanted to sell with one year left on their contract, spending 55 million and then I, getting, and then them playing basically None at all throughout the whole season. But that's not for, but that for then. But it's, the, it's not a good the, fee. The fee. It's not a good we, fee. But the fee when we bought him wasn't uh, based on him being injured all season. They didn't go. It'll be fifty-five million. Oh, and he's going to be injured all year. That, yeah, that yeah, wasn't that's, known that's, at the, the point. What we doing the on the video? Though? We're looking back on like no, no. The but value I said, I said, I think the fee was decent at the time we bought him. Not that it's since proven to be good value. I'm, I'm low, I'm, right? So because he's a United lad and he's been injured, it's not nice for him. I'm low to be completely brutally honest with the, what I think he should get. So I'll go with you and go to it, You know why? Because it, why it weren't, everyone at the time said it wasn't a good fee. Because, th because like, this, move, I mean? this move can't have been any worse and, than it's what it's been. And because it's, it was a weird sign anyway, because everyone was like, you know, I need to sign a midfielder like De Jong, that like, can help us control games and a ball progressor and stuff like that. Mason Mount's none of those things. Mason Mount is another marauding, like second striker number 10 that we wanted to kind of sh shoehorn into being a number eight. And it's, it's funny because all the issues that we've seen about United being so transitional and open and the games like basketball games, you look at who we've got injured and unavailable. Mason Mount comes back into that team and just goes straight into that style of football. Mason Mount doesn't come back and help us control games better. Do you know he, what? he fits right into that kind of frantic, all like heavy metal, bolting forward football as well. You know what, the, the only saving grace is we didn't give him the number seven shirt because then it would have been a fucking disaster. Yeah. So what are you saying then? What are you rating it? I also think I, based on the, the so, thing that's so far it too, for me is that I think he has got potential. Okay, I'll as give you player, that. I'll give you that. Yeah. I don't want to be too harsh on the kid because he's, he's here yeah. and I, I feel for him. It's not his fault he's been injured. He's probably gutted that he's been injured. And because of the potential, I'll give him a two. But I think in terms of what he's brought, he's brought nothing to the table so far. Yeah. And it's not his fault. But we may as well have set fire to 55 million quid so far because, it, you know what I mean? At least that'll keep you warm. We but just, we've still got another four years out of Melbourne, yeah. which is mm. some, So potential was given. To, to have some... My worry is breaking. that, you know, yeah. the new manager comes in if, we, if Eric Tanad doesn't sit out and just goes, I don't want him. What are you thinking, Ronaldo? I think two. Yeah. And that's, we'll just that's me being nice. And, and it's not his fault. I don't know. I think, I think three. I think three or four. <laughs> I think it's hard. I do think the it's way hard you big side then. I thought it was going to be like five seven. or something. No, but I do think I think maybe four because it's not. It's we've still got four more years of him. If he'd been alone for a season, like an Amrabat, and we'd seen this, then it's then you're looking at one. Do you have any zeros. concerns whatsoever that he's not that great? Yeah, well, of course I do. Yeah, but I but I don't. Last season he didn't have a good season. This season he's been injured all season. 
Yeah. There could be a player there that's just not what we think he is. He's got injury issues now and he's just... Well, yeah, as long as he's... Uh, I'm hoping he's not going to be injury prone forever. So what we're saying overall then, three for Mount? I, I drag it up yeah, a little yeah, bit. Two okay, and a half, three. Okay, okay, Should sure we say yeah. three? Okay, so Mason okay. Mount, three out of ten. Uh, Onana, this is going to be an interesting one. And I think I might have a different score to you two on him. Uh, Ronaldo, start with you. Thoughts on Andre Onana? Onana, I'm going to probably say five and a half. Yeah. I think he's been okay, just above average... But I think if he had a better Chambersy campaign, you'd probably say um, a six or seven because in the Premier League, for the most part, he's been fairly solid. And I'm not gonna lie, I think he's got to be, he's got to have a little bit of leeway in terms of the fact that he's playing in front for a team that systematically set up for him to face 25 shots per game. Mm. So for him to be under fire like that, the build up being a bit of a mess without two of our most progressive players. I know he's made a lot of high profile errors in the Champions League that takes his um his score down, but I think he's been it's been okay enough to probably get a five and a half out of ten. I just remember Jay. I thought you were messing about when you said about the number seven thing for Mount. He actually is. No, it's, been, it's a joke. I, I was joking. I, I thought you were being serious. No, I was joking. Oh because he's God. number seven for I've us. literally completely forgot he actually is the number yeah, seven. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were saying like like is it a reference to Sancho or nope, something? Nope. He actually is United's number. That's seven. why I think it's not his fault, but he couldn't have been a worse signing if we tried. Oh. Um, unless we made him captain and maybe you know named a state a stand after him. Um, Onana then. I'm going to be kind to Onana. Yeah, I am. Because I think there's mitigating circumstances you touched upon. He's had a back four that's constantly changing. Yeah. He's been asked to play different roles. At one minute where he's playing out from the back, he's doing all that. He must have done some instructions for the manager to alter his game or something. I don't understand the play that saw at the Emirates to what I've seen more recently. Also, as well, I, I, I admire the fact that he's come back from that disastrous ca Champions League campaign and got his head back up yeah. and started putting in good performances. Plus, he's coming into a team where he's replacing one of the few players who's, for some fans, has been a bit of a legend in David De Gea. He's coming in and replacing him, so there's more pressure on you there. I give the kid six and a half. Yeah. I agree with the Champions League thing. He cost us the Champions League. He did. Yeah, but he's yeah. bounced back from that for me in a positive way. And do you know what, I, you know what makes me appreciate Andre Onana more? When I watch other goalkeepers. Yeah, me too. I watch other goalkeepers That's in a, a more point. settled defence, week in, week out, yeah. drop absolute clangers. He if, if you only watch Man United, I think you think Onana's worse than you. Yeah. Have. If you watch City, if you watch Arsenal, yeah. if you watch everyone under them, yeah. other than uh, um, uh, Alisson, a lot of goalkeepers, your top keepers these days, make more mistakes I know you're than the top Edison, keepers used to. I just really don't read Edison. No, no, but they, they, they but do. But like Ramsdale, like, yeah. Raya. Like, what are you doing? Even Ramsdale Edison. played his first he, game for Arsenal in the Premier League since Brentford last time he played him yeah. and cost him a goal. It's like, it's like even, fucking it's about. Like even yesterday, you know, the, the penalty Edison gave away. Yeah. Short back pass from um, Ake. But it's almost like... Just because it's a short back pass doesn't mean if you're Edison, you're just going to go, all right. You've just got the right to all right, clear. I've, I've, I'm, 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 My only you, option here... Because you don't like the only option this. is for me to give a blatant penalty away. <laughs> yeah. It like, was he literally... Medicine. You see the challenge? It was like... He's, he was, it was like he needed his bank account it checking was, after it that. Was nowhere he's, near. He has so many. Near him. He has so many brain explosions. It's weird. Like yeah. Nunes literally knocked. <laughs> you know, he could have. He could have fully conned Nunes. You know, <laughs> Nunes has literally tapped the ball and started to dive even before Edison's got anywhere near him. Uh, and then Edison just went and absolutely booted him. Yeah. When the guy's going towards the foot by line, I saw yeah. that and I was like, Jay, I need to, I need to give I, you a belt. Oh, I'm on, your, I'm he's on like, your bus far too often lately, bro. I'm like brains. agreeing with a lot of what you're saying. I'm like, because when you said that with Edison, I thought, oh, he's like, brain explodes but once all you the said time. I've noticed it a bit more. That's Bulls arguably the second best goalkeeper in the in the Premier League, right? And he's yeah. got one in him. He was never getting there. I don't know. Like, I was so confused. If Andrew Fernandez does that, right? Yeah. It's on the front page yeah, of the it's newspaper. Game over. It's game over. It's right. game over. I think in 2024, okay. Onana if you include Alisson's injury, has been one of, if not the best goalkeeper in the Premier League. The problem is, he was one of, if not the worst goalkeepers in the Champions League. Literally, yeah. single-handedly costing us multiple games. I think overall, I'm going to go with a six for Onana. I think it's been above average, but an, uh, but I can see I it being a seven, eight, nine. I went six point five. So I really like what him. You say I so. really like him, and his shots and he's slightly unorthodox. And I said this before he came. Sometimes you watch him and he'll save one thing. We go, I can't believe he saved that. And then there'll be another save where Level six. he'll sort of not quite move the way other keepers move and people think that he should have done better with it but sometimes if he was a bit more orthodox he would look almost better letting shots in if you know what I mean some keepers do a good job of making it look like they had no chance when really they maybe could have got we closer to, and only like, gets close to need, stuff and you, then gets criticised you need to remember what this kid's been through like, the guy f flew over to the AFCON 
And then basically he got dropped for some third-rate keeper. It was his cousin as well, I think, which makes it even worse. Yeah. And then he has to come back. He's like, he's not had it easy, has he? And yet, recently, especially, I get you on the 2024 thing, he's been very, very good. Yeah, so I'm going to say six. Should we say six overall for Andrea Nana? Six yeah. is fine. Uh, yeah. Next up then, Rasmus Hoyland. This one, again, like everything pretty much so far, there are good and there is bad. But I think even the guy that I saw not scoring in his, what, 40, first 14 sure Premier League games, yeah. I and saw he's some good performances. He was the top scorer in the Champions League after the first sort of four or five games. I think he got five five goals in the Champions League. It's six goals or seven goals in the in the in the Premier League as well. And I think he's on thirteen in all competitions, which is roughly what I would I'd hope for him. I think before the season I said I'd like to see fifteen. No, you goals nailed it. You nailed what you and said. We're what probably going to see that. What, what he's done really. You, I think you called it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think this has been a good sign, and, and seventy-two million is too much for what his experience had been. But I think in terms of his output. You know, you look at Nunes last season, you look at um, Gabriel Jesus at Arsenal, you look at players in that sort of 50, 60, 70 million kind of bracket, first season young striker, that's kind of what you pay these days. I think this has been a good signing. I think it's been a great signing. Yeah. I'd Dude. say seven, seven and a half. He had a rough start, he had a bit of a rough stretch um, in the Premier League. But he's coming the other side of it, and even when he had a struggle, he was he was showing promise. Yeah. Mm, and he's, he's, with him being the age he is, and I think, if United don't do the usual, which is ruining a player and not and not allowing them to progress um, to the best of their ability, I think United could have their centre forward position set for the next five, six, seven, eight years. Yeah. Do you know what I like about this kid as well? Everything you've said, I agree with. Also, like the fact that he shouts at them wingers that aren't giving him the ball. He lets them know. Yeah. Like you need a bit of that. Yeah. I'm sick of like I love Marcus Rashford, but Marcus will sulky if Gan actually don't pass to him. He don't. He lets him know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he looks like he's up for it. He's always up for it. And I like that about him. Mm. I want to see that from a striker. He gets himself about, he scores some good goals. And yeah, there's just, no, there's just nothing to dislike about him. Mm. So whatever we, what do we give Miners? Eight, I think. I, I'm I go, go seven and a half. I'm seven and a half. Seven. I'd only put him just slightly less than Martin as me. Yeah, me too. I, I get the, he went, I mean also, there's mitigating circumstances with that goal drought in that, you know, we've just slated Anthony. Anthony was playing a lot of those games. What was he offering him to him? Mm. Nothing. No. Yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, seven and a half then overall? Yeah. Yep. I think that's fair enough. Uh, Johnny Evans. Love this. Love this man. Go on. Love him. I love Brilliant him. signing. He, it, mate, no matter how bad this season has been, if it weren't for him, it'd be a lot fucking worse. Mm. Trust me. St even at the Emirates, not the Emirates, sorry, the Etihad, he was doing a decent job and then he goes, goes off injured. I'm not saying, it, you know, we would have won if he had stayed on the pitch, but it got a lot worse when he went off. I think he's been a fantastic signing. I give signing. a firm eight. I'm, I'm only going to... Mate, what did we give Miners? I'll give him the same as Rasmus. I'll give him a seven and a half. Seven and a half. I think he's been a great signing. And I'd give him another deal, mate. I'm not seeing anything to make me think he's not got another year in him. It just feels a bit like... I think as it's worked out, it's been, I think it's the opposite amount. I think it's a deal that didn't look great at the time that is looking better by the week. Whereas Mount, I, thought, I personally thought, looked good at the time and is looking worse by the week. So I think overall, the idea that we needed someone like Johnny Evans where he was in his career, he, he came to his old club to rehab an injury and all of a sudden he's playing. I think the signing when we did it was a sort of three out of 10 sign. It worried me. I thought this is a stupid idea. We're taking backward steps. I think now I'm probably saying a, a six. I think he's been good on, I think he's been good. If it also as a transfer, I'm looking to the future a little bit as well. There isn't a lot of a future there, but I think for what we've got, he's, he's definitely impressed me. I would say six out of 10. I think overall that puts him around a, around a seven. Seven, seven, yeah. I'd go seven, yeah. I yeah, think that's fair, fair. Seven, and also as well, like, he's not really had a bad game other than Wrexham. I've not had a game where I've looked at him and gone, fuck, you know? And I've done that with every other defender this season, including Lissandro Myers. Wrexham game was playing move. No, I'm joking. Ten, like, yeah, yeah, 10 over. Yeah. Yeah. Kids like, it, yeah. it was his first game, I think, kicking a ball for months. Yeah. Um, he's been min. And, like, you know, some games, like the Burnley game, whatever, he's been very good. He's stood out. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So he's got a bit about him, Johnny Evans, as well, because he's been here, he's won titles. He's got that aura about him of, like, he's not getting phased like some of his teammates are. So I give him a 7 out of 10. And I'll be honest with you, if it's announced that United have extended his deal by another year, I ain't got an issue with that. Um, next up then, Sofi and Amrabat. Jesus Christ. 22 appearances. <laughs> oh, He's man. alone with an, uh, I don't know if it's a, a firm option to buy, but I think it's a sort of understood option to buy of around mm. sort of 20 million euros. I give it's him a not, three. It's not his fault, right? People got excited. Football Twitter, United He's Twitter got excited because of that clip of him running alongside Kylian Mbappe. 
and the fact, all right, as Steele's point out, he's not slating, but he did well. He did well in his Europa Conference as well. I get all that, but it was like he was looked at as the saviour for Manchester United, and he never should have been put on that pedestal. Like after the Arsenal game, do you remember? Every, people were saying every United signings that. Do yeah, I mean? people were saying once Amrabat comes in this team, watch what happens. Win Wait, a hang on a minute. As you always said, he was at a mid-table Italian team till he's 28 or whatever. He's 27. There's a reason for that. He's a good player. He's not good enough. Yeah. Is it three? Did you say? I'd agree. Three out of ten. I go with that. Yeah, I think. Yeah, maybe slightly higher. I'd go four, but. I agree with everything you've said. I just come to a slightly yeah, different much. He's everything on. that's the, the problem with sort of some modern football fans is in the sense that half a man even watched him yeah. and already they're going, he's the answer to all our problems. He's going to make us catch Manchester City, which is the most ludicrous thing you could say. Yet people were actually believing that shit. Yeah. I think basically people watched two Morocco games at the World Cup and decided he was a top class player, didn't they? Yeah. And he's, you know, he's, I'm not saying he's a bad player. No, but he's, he's all not, right. He's not been great for United. Yeah. Um, Let's move on. Uh, yeah. Serge Regulon. Do you know what? Regulon, I liked. I think I liked him enough where he can get the four and a half, five region because one thing that he did show was energy and impetus and like almost like he he, he felt what we kind of criticise a lot of the players. He seemed like he felt almost glorified to play for United. He felt lucky to play for United and he showed that in yeah. his work. And he was almost a bit of an indictment on the other players because when you watch Regulon, a player that's struggling, like fell out of favour at Tottenham and now he's at things on Brentford at lo- on loan, he's doing okay there. Um, when he played for United, I thought he offered us a bit of another dynamic down there that we didn't often see. I thought, I think it's because we're so used to like below par attacking play from our fullback areas. Because even Shaw has the ability to do that. He doesn't always do it, do you know what I mean? And I think what Regulon showed is almost like, Shaw is like 10 times the player in terms of his ability and mm-hmm. what he's got, but he thought like Regulon had a bit of that kind of fire in his belly and that bit of so was it fun, the, funness that I wish Shaw had. Do you know remember I mean? it was in yeah, the yeah. Allianz Arena where he went yeah. on that run? He was very good in that game. Yeah, yeah. Was, oh, and you like looking at, wow, look at this. And, so I'm, good, and everyone joked in there, just give it a while and we'll bring him down to our level. Yeah, yeah. And that kind of almost happened, kind of didn't, didn't it? Happen. I think, to a certain extent, I think he's being, I think he, he's almost molassified. Where I thought he's been better than molassified. But I think his, the, the biggest thing for me is his energy and his willingness I, that's shone against Luke Shaw, who was, even when he was fit, very, was having a bit of a I think one, He's very one piece. I don't think he was yeah. amazing himself. I think there's been a, like a Donny van der Beek FC type thing with him. Yeah. Where, because we let him go when we probably shouldn't have, is the answer to all our problems. Because he still tweets about us and posts on social media about him, we all love him. And because he was good when, when he came in and he had that energy and that thing that everyone looks at him now as like he's Patrice Evra. He was a decent player. Yeah. He put in some good performances and we probably should have kept hold of him. But he, was never, he was never like gonna be our first yeah, choice left back if everyone's fit. Yeah, I think five or four out of 10. I'd, mm, I'd probably go four and a half. Yeah, yeah. four and a half? Yeah, we'll okay, go with yeah. that. Right, that's all of them. So now, We've had the supercomputer, Ethan James. I love that. He has put it together. A supercomputer. So there's a couple of contentious ones that we have to go through here quickly. Go on then. One is so we've got top three and a bottom three to, to come up. In terms of the top three, we have to decide between Ericsson and Evans because they both have the same rating. In the def- I'm going to go in the defence of Ericsson here. He's played more. He's actually done more. Ericsson is has been a, a sort of an active participant in good things for United last season, rather than Evans, who whilst he's impressed me and he's overachieved, has been more of a sort of not as bad as the people around him and not as bad as we thought. But for me, being actively part of something good is worth slightly more than not being a, a negative in something bad. Okay. okay. You saw me. Yes, Do you know what I mean? I agree. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Okay. So here's you've our made, top you've three. You made then. a very good case there, by the way. Thank you very yeah, much. Very so good. here's the top three uh, transfers under 10. I'll we'll put them full screen. <laughs> Martinez one, Hoyland two, Ericsson three. I think if we'd have done this a couple of months ago, Casemiro's in that list. I agree. I think if we'd have done it maybe in a couple more months, um, Evans might well have pushed his way into that list. But for now, I kind of agree that that's, that's probably the top three, isn't it? Do we all agree? Yeah, it yeah. would have been Martinez, Hoyland, Casemiro, but Casemiro's performance this season has definitely dropped him. Yeah, that's fair yeah, enough. Yeah. So Martinez, Hoyland, and Eriksen is the top three. In terms of bottom three then, um, here is the list here then. 
Anthony Vegost and Mount sneaking in. Do you know what's crazy about that? What I'm free. There's two players are worth how much? Nearly hundred and thirty million. Yeah, but it's ba- the, the overall. If you divide it by three, yeah. it's balanced out by Vegost being free. So yeah. it's only you know yeah. forty five million each. <laughs> um, the good thing that you can say, Vegost, I feel sorry for because I like him. The one thing you can say, certainly about Mount, and I'll say it for Anthony as well because the same applies, I'm just not as confident. He's still here, there's still years left on the contract. There's a good chance Anthony leaves in the summer, I get that. Do you know what? But I'm not going to say done, dead, buried, because he is still an active manager. I think that's the worst I'm going to give him some level of You know what you just said about Legos? It's the worst compliment in football, I think. What's that? What was it? Sorry. Whenever someone's talking about a player and they say, but he's a good lad. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 a good lad. As soon as someone says he's a good lad, he's a good lad lad. about about a professional footballer. You know his shit. Yeah, was it when Rio was on filthy and he said it about someone? He'll start creasing up. Yeah, well, you lot are mad. I feel like like, when you say that, I start. You know, like when he when he starts to say it, then I was was saying it to Wally, wasn't it? Oh, he's another another good lad, is it? And he was like, it's about Ireland for God's sake. Yeah, he's like, no, he's more than just a good lad. But yeah, I hear that. It's like it's damning with faint praise in it. Yeah. Um, Ross Murphy says, out of all the Ten Hag signings rated, which players can possibly turn it around and improve their rating? I mean, in terms of turning it around and needing to, I think for me, Mason Mount's the main one. Yeah, I think, I think Mount, yeah. the good thing for Mount is, it's yeah. only the injury that's really done him. Yeah, yeah. It's not, he's, he's not played 78 games or whatever it is like Andy has and been trashing a lot of them. He's just not had the opportunity because of his injuries. I know he's played some and you're right, yeah. he hasn't set the world alight, but he's not been fit. If he gets fit, we know there's a player there. There has been. So we just need to see it in a Manchester United shirt. Yeah. And also, it was proper, like you say, money, getting in when we maybe could have waited and also giving him the number seven shirt. It's just dumb moves yeah. by the club, it man. Was, it's it's it like piling loads more pressure on him when you don't need to. It's stupidness. No. Right, that's going to be all from us. Hit the link in the comments and in the description to go and check out Manscaped. 20% off and free shipping when you use the code DEVILS20, our special discount code. Ronaldo, thank you for coming on. Uh, thank you, Jay, as well, of course. Thank you at home for getting involved and getting in your super chats and your comments. Just before we go, Vicky Palliam says, Love the Mount signing, but Hannibal could have gotten a bigger chance. We could have invested in a DM and a centre back, maybe so, but you know, we're not going to see it now. Sell a VA. Exactly. Thank you very Spain. much for joining us. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you in a bit. <laughs>